Yo guys, Zakaragi here for a performance review for the Adidas AE1 Lows. So I really do think Adidas could have done better with this shoe and we'll find out later on in the video. But before we do that, I need all of you guys to do me a huge favor and like and comment on this video. I really need the engagement so that the algorithm boosts this video out to all the masses out there. That way I can continue to grow and put up videos for you guys. So make sure you go ahead and like and comment. And without further ado, let's get into the good, the bad, and the ugly and you know I kind of want to do things different this way and start off with the things I didn't like about the AE1 Lowe's. So the first problem that I want to address is actually the cushioning setup. So this shoe is a combination of light strike foam and light boost foam which is isolated in the heel and forefoot and it's different from the AE1 mids because that shoe had full length jet boost. Now the AE1 mids were phenomenal. I love the way the jet boost felt on foot. It was responsive bouncy and plush on foot, just an overall great experience, but I can't really say the same when it comes to the AU1 lows. Now, I didn't really like this setup because it was more firm and just it wasn't as bouncy as I wanted it to be either. Yes, you were low to the ground and yes, you got great responsiveness out of the setup, but also impact protection was lacking as well. I really didn't feel that light boost when I stepped on it. I could notice it in the heel a tiny bit after a bit of break in time and I really couldn't feel it at all in the forefoot which was disappointing because I thought I was going to be getting like a zoom experience with the light boost foam in the forefoot and how it was isolated. I think that I couldn't really feel it all that much just because of how it was kind of encased within the light strike foam and the light strike foam itself needed some break in time but didn't really feel all that much better after break in so i really do think adidas missed with this cushioning setup they really should have just kept the full length jet boost because whew, that would have made these shoes a whole lot better now this is just what i think based on my preferences obviously some people out there might feel differently they might like this setup because it's what they prefer but for me i would rather have the setup of the au1 mids versus what they have in the lows right here now i did try switching out the stock insoles and putting in my move insoles instead while playing and yes it did help with the cushioning setup making it feel slightly better but it also negatively impacted the shoe which actually leads me into my next point which is the second problem i had with the AU1 lows and that was the heel containment. Now sizing really does play a factor in this because you need to get your correct size in order to get the best sort of containment for your heel and I went true to size with these which is what I went with with the AU1 mids and I still felt like I had minor heel slippage and that was pretty annoying because I did try on the 10.5, I tried on the 9.5, I didn't go so far as to go down to a size 9 because I felt like that would have been way too much but the 10 felt best to me when I was trying them on in store but regardless I could still feel my heel slipping out a tiny bit and when I had that move insole in there but the way the move insole is set up you are slightly elevated in the heel compared to the stock insole so I could feel my heel slipping a little bit more when I had them in. I can notice it and I really didn't feel all that safe and secure so I had to actually take out the move insoles and put in the stock insole again when I was playing so that kind of sucked because I like the extra cushion I got from the move insole but obviously I got to protect my foot overall so I had to take it out but I don't like how Adidas sort of messed up with this part of the shoe. I mean, the AE1 mids, there was no issue whatsoever. I think they should have just kept the same last that they used for the AE1 mids and used it for the lows right here. But I don't know what's going on over there. That's another problem I had with the AE1 lows. Now let's get into the good stuff. And starting with the traction, these have the exact same herringbone pattern as the AU1 mids. So what you're going to get from these is phenomenal grip. Like these guys grip on clean and dirty courts like no problem at all. Stop at a dime grip, you're able to just do all your moves with full confidence. I don't really remember sliding out all too much really and it only happened when a lot of dust was collected onto the outsole. So these do collect more dust than their typical outsole because it does have a translucent rubber. And I also do want to note that the ascent pair that i have has that marble look to it and i noticed it had slightly worse grip than the ae1 low murals right here and that was kind of weird but the difference was negligible honestly because it didn't really affect it all too much it was really when i was doing my traction test when i noticed that i would slide out a little bit on that shoe whereas i did the exact same movement and i didn't slide out at all with the 
AE1 low murals right here, which has this standard translucent outsole. So I just think it comes down to like the rubber compound in that case, but it is what it is. So outdoors, I wouldn't really recommend these. I know some people say you can take these outdoors, but for me personally, I wouldn't even dare bother trying because it does have a soft rubber compound and I just don't think it would hold up very long. Moving along to the materials, and it was more or less the same experience I had with the AE1 mids. Now there were some things that I enjoyed better about the material setup with the lows, and there were some things I enjoyed less. Now getting into the things that I really didn't like, and that was actually the tongue. Now this tongue doesn't have the same bungee cords that connect to it and go down to the footbed like the mid pair has, so the tongue does move around quite a bit when you start playing, and I really found that to be annoying. Now getting into the things that I actually liked about the material setup better, and that would be the inner sculpting and padding within the shoes but other than that the materials still have those same tpu wings on both sides of the shoe they actually move surprisingly well with the foot you wouldn't think so by looking at it but there's no awkward flex zones or any part of that material that digs into your foot when you step into it which is great so they also provide some nice lateral containment as well you feel really secure on those side to side movements which is awesome and one thing i actually don't like about the tpu wings is the accumulation of scuff marks you get when you play in them I just don't like the way it looks, obviously it's unavoidable, but me personally, I just don't like it. So another aspect of the shoe that I enjoyed was actually the lockdown, despite it not fully helping out with the heel slippage problem. Now I know this sounds a little bit contradictory, but hear me out. So I specifically like the fact that the shoes switched up the lacing setup and it's better and improved in my opinion because with the lows you can actually tie them up much tighter than you could with the lacing setup of the mids. Now like I mentioned it doesn't fully prevent the heel slippage. I tied these shoes up as tight as my foot could handle and I could still feel my heel slipping out a bit which was pretty annoying so there you have it. But I just like the fact that the lacing setup is improved. Now, when it comes to sizing for these shoes, it's very, very strange. Personally, true to size work well for me, but for you guys, I'd really recommend you guys try them on in store first because different foot shapes will require different sizes for these shoes. You just gotta see what works best for you and your foot. But overall, guys, I still do think these are a solid performer on court. I do prefer the mids, however, much more. Depending on your preferences, you may like these better. It all depends on what you guys like, but I really do think Adidas missed out on these because they should have included the full length jet boost and an improved heel containment setup. Like, man, I would have much rather have paid like an extra $10, $15 to have those improvements added onto the shoes. So Adidas, if you're listening, that's what I think because you guys potentially missed out on having a front runner for hoop shoe of the year. So comment down below and let me know what you guys think about these shoes. If you've played in them, let me know what you guys think and I'd love to hear from you guys. So we're at that point in the video now, it's time for hashtag Zakaragi what you rocking and for today i got the bape dame nines right here i will be mismatching these on court that's gonna be a dope look for sure so that's it for today guys i appreciate you all for watching i'm signing out peace